My name is Roger Stevens. I am time faculty, and I would like to share with you a little project that I've been doing with all of my time classes for about five years, which is about how long I've been a time instructor. And it's a fairly simple project. I'll describe how it works. Um, I'll explain uh, why I came up with this to begin with and um, offer you uh, some of what I've observed, um, some of the benefits that have come from doing this and why I've continued to do it uh, with every class I, I have, um, semester after semester. It, it seems to have worked out in um, ways that I did not anticipate. And uh, I, I now think it's a pretty valuable part of um, each class. Okay, so uh, it has the kind of uh, uninspired, but I think appropriate name journals. So that's how we refer to it in, in the class as the journals. And it goes like this. Um, I create in the very beginning of the semester a, a Google folder that's called journals. And uh, for every single class we have, a new folder is created that has the date of the class on it. And into that folder goes a single image from each student. And this image is simply a photograph that the student has taken from class to class to class in between classes while they're not in class. And this is a photograph of a moment they have had in the world uh, outside of school or maybe in school, at least outside of class, that they have had some sort of artistic experience with. So what does that mean? That means uh, they might be walking down 14th Street and see an interesting piece of graffiti on a wall and they stop and they just take a moment to look at that graffiti instead of glimpsing it and continuing to walk on They look at it, consider it for a moment, take a picture of it. Their journal is done. They might be sitting on a subway and they see an ad with a particularly strange typography um, used in it. And they can look at that and wonder why that ad chose that typeface and why it's the size it is and why it has the color it has. And they'll take a picture of it and their journal is done. And they might see an interesting shadow on the wall of their dorm room when they're trying to take do their homework or in a stairwell. They might see an unusually striking piece of crumpled trash on the street that happens to be catching light in an unusually interesting or, or artistic way. They take a picture of the trash. Okay, so all of these images, one from each student, one per class, goes into the folder and every class of ours begins the same way, which is I open the Google folder. I say, okay, let's do our journals real quick. And we bring up an image. There's the image of the unusually nice piece of trash with the sunlight glinting off of it on 13th Street and 7th Avenue. And I say, whose is that? And Melissa says, oh, that's mine. And I say, oh, that's cool, Melissa. What made you take that picture? And she says something to the effect of, I was walking down the street and looking around, the trees are beautiful, and there's strange noises coming out of a car, and I think a rat ran across the street, and suddenly I was struck by this crumbled up little piece of foil that was creating kind of like this iridescent rainbow thing, and I thought, wow, that's so cool. I stood for a moment, considered it, took a picture of it, and I thought it was worth sharing, and I would say absolutely worth sharing. And now the class has heard Melissa speak about a rather personal moment she's had with a piece of trash on the street. Um, if Melissa happened to have gone to a museum and saw a piece of work that she particularly hated or loved or was moved by or confused by, that her classmates would see, oh, what gallery did you go to? Where is that museum? How did you get to that museum? And each of these little photographs then becomes some entree into a much bigger conversation about the where and the when and the why of where or when or why these images were taken and posted. We go through all the journals, photographs, everyone says their piece, just a moment or two for each piece that comes up. And then we get on with the class, with the lectures, the instruction, the other topics at hand, the critiques, etc. Okay, so that's those are the mechanics of the journals. This is why I even dreamt this idea up to begin with. I observed early on when I was teaching that many students, of course, are coming from places well outside of New York, sometimes within New York, 
but um, coming to school in what can be uh, an intimidating, overwhelming place with a lot of work, and a lot of new people, and a lot of demands. And it is understandable that um, a student might find themselves narrowing their focus down to their classwork, their classes, the cafeteria, their dorm room, the route between their dorm room and their classes. And this incredibly rich environment around them that is New York City um, is subconsciously or intentionally blotted out in order to preserve some sanity and get through the tasks of the day. Seems like a tragic loss of an incredibly useful, instructive, unique habitat that could be inspiring, enriching, et cetera. So um, one of the ways I thought it might be um, good to have these students look outside of the standard matrix of their day-to-day -day was to try to look closely, if even for a moment, at something that seemed irrelevant or like a distraction or inconsequential. Like I said, the chipping paint on a platform of a subway, some typography on a no, don't walk sign, um, an interesting piece of squash gum, the shirt of another student walking down the street with them, and so on. So this was an attempt to get them out of the ordinary for a moment and to exercise their powers of concentration and focus and even visual acuity, which now leads us to sort of the second part of this effort, which is to consider the world um, as a visual artist, as a creative, as someone who's allowed to and even should look as deeply as they can maybe at everything and into everything because everything might play a role in their own practice as creatives. So don't just ignore the trash or the signage or the outfits, but stop and consider them. You're allowed to. If you were pre-med, maybe um, you should focus more on your anatomy lessons and your organic chemistry. If you're an art student, you get to really deeply consider and utilize everything around you. Okay, while, while you're exercising this maybe enhanced perception of the world around you, you're now framing it, composing it, taking a picture of it, capturing it. You start to consider lighting and framing, cropping, uh, texture, uh, proximity to this object, vantage point, some of the nuts and bolts of photography itself and of making an image and making the most of something you see, trying to convey visually um, something you're experiencing. It is incredible, I learned after the first time I did this and subsequently, how this simple little practice of taking a picture and putting it into a folder every class over the course of the 15 or so weeks of a semester improves the photographic skills, the visual communication skills of every student. Every one of them gets better at looking at things, capturing them the way they want to capture them, and then speaking about them. I'm, I've spoken to so many of my students. I've read so many um, evaluations that come back. Um, about how much they enjoy the artistic process of this, the creative process of this, the mental psychological process of this, the, um, the kind of um, enriched experience they have being somewhere or doing something that might have otherwise been kind of uneventful or boring even, um, being stuck 
in an airport waiting for a plane, suddenly everything around them has the potential to be a journal that they can capture, go, compose, put up into a, a folder and speak about amongst their classmates. And finally, maybe there are even more benefits to this, they learn about one another. They hear one another speak. Um, they learn about the city they're in. Oh, you went to a poetry reading. I didn't know where it's poetry reading. Pop up fashion, sh runway show, uh, NYU, something. Oh, there was a lecture at, at Cooper Union. Um, wow, I didn't know we had a gym in the dorm. As a collective, rather than taking on the daunting experience of understanding an entire city, an entire school, even just your building or your small little social network, instead of having to tackle that on your own, now it's a group of people who are all tackling it together and sharing um, news from the front line. Oh, you know where I went last night? Amazing uh, Korean barbecue place, amazing little film center, uh, and so on. So um, fosters conversation, fosters community, fosters a mutual understanding, fosters knowledge, image making, and uh, it's been really enjoyable. I have all of these journals um, collected in a master folder. Many of my students refer back to them. We look at them again. Sometimes we use them as material for book projects or other little personal, um, maybe collage or semester review kind of projects. It's an incredible little archive from which my current students, that semester students, uh, are welcome to uh, draw from, and all of my students from the past. And uh, they post them on their Instagram accounts and um, they, uh, they share them with their friends and so on. So this is my project called Journals. And um, I hope I have somewhat clearly conveyed its essence and the way it works and what I think are its um, benefits and Maybe you do something like this also. Maybe you do something far more interesting that I would love to hear about. Uh, you are welcome to do it also. And I hope this has been of uh, some help uh, to you and uh, your own mission doing the very hard and terribly important and incredibly rewarding work of being a professor. All right. Thank you very much for listening and be well. Good luck.